What will you do on your next critical call? Do you think about it? Imagine being dispatched to the unexpected. What could it be? How will the patient present? How will you feel? What will you say? How will you interact with your colleagues? What are the critical procedures you might be called on to perform? Are you ready? These videos are intended to comprise a part of the historic New York State Collaborative Protocol Rollout Education and be a resource for providers outside of the participating New York State regions as free and open access medical education, what we commonly refer to as foam ed. The videos are educational resources only and not intended to supersede state, regional, or local protocols, policies, medical direction, or any other authority. The New York State Collaborative Protocol Rollout Education also contains other components, including didactic modules, podcasts, self-study, and a protocol examination. The specific requirements for successful completion of the rollout education will be set by each individual region. Agencies may have additional educational requirements for their members to complete. The videos will cover the application of individual protocols in the setting of simulated scenarios. Watch the videos with a critical eye. Is there anything you would do differently? Did the providers make any mistakes? How would you debrief the session if you were the clinical instructor? It is our hope that these videos will give you ideas that you can incorporate into your own educational sessions. Too often, EMS education is thought of as sitting through a lecture and answering some questions on a test. But that is not the world we practice in. As an instructor of mine once said, you fight like you've trained, so you train like you fight. Didactics are important, but they are only a part of what is necessary to achieve success. One would certainly not become physically fit by just attending lectures on exercise. One would actually have to go out and do it. Wait, what? We thank the Lairdall Company for providing the mannequins, video production, and other resources to make this possible. Certainly the work they do to minimize the artificiality of scenario practice is reflective in their incredible products and educational initiatives. Indeed, working with their mannequins here is the closest thing you can get to being immersed in a real scene. Even if you don't have the funds to invest in high fidelity simulation equipment just yet, there's incredible value in rehearsing exactly what you do even in your own head if faced with a critical patient. And for those who do deal with serious patients on a regular basis, I'm sure you can think of some things that you haven't done recently. With some thought and creativity, anyone can develop meaningful exercises. Now let's go.